This video will provide some guidelines on citing websites, including blogs, multimedia, and individual web pages using MLA style. If you're looking for how to cite an online article or an ebook in MLA style, watch our MLA style videos for citing articles or books instead, as those will be more relevant to you. First, a note about terminology. When citing sources from the web in MLA, we should distinguish between websites and web pages. The web page is the individual document that's displayed in your browser. It might be compared to an individual article in a newspaper, like this page. The website is the collection of many pages gathered under one title. It might be compared to the entire newspaper, like this site for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, which contains many individual articles or pages. In MLA, you will often use both the titles of websites and of web pages in your citation. When citing a web page, you need to use the following information the name of the author, title of the web page in quotes, title of the website in italics, publisher if there is one, and date of last update written as day, month, year, or minus the day and or month if you don't have that. For the access information, you include either the DOI or the web page URL, remove the HTTPS colon slash slash part. The DOI, which stands for Digital Object Identifier, is most common for journal articles, so if you see something with the DOI, I recommend you go watch our MLA video for articles now instead, as it's much more relevant. If you're using the URL for a page that can be easily edited, such as a blog or social media, or if there's no date of last update so you don't really know how often it's updated, it's recommended to add the access day, month, year after the URL. You'll notice here that, once again, this citation uses the same MLA concept of containers. The work itself, which is usually the web page, or sometimes the blog entry, video, or social media post itself, it's inside container number one, which is usually the entire website, including the publisher, date, and access information. If we're citing a work that is missing parts of the citation information, such as a date or publisher, you can just leave that part off. Very often, the publisher's name is essentially the same as the website name, so in that case, you can leave the publisher part off, too. Here's an example of a web page we could cite. The author, title of web page, overall website, date, and URL are all pretty clearly indicated. In creating our citation, the author and web page constitute the work itself, and the website information is container number one. Notice again on the URL, you take off the HTTPS part. I added the access date here because this is a blog post, which is pretty easily editable. You may be noticing by now the two different formats for web page titles and website titles. The same title punctuation rules apply to the web as we use for all sources in MLA. The individual standalone web page is in quotation marks, and the title of the overarching website is italicized. In this particular example, the word Sanditon is italicized inside of the quotation marks, but that's relatively uncommon. It only appears here because the web page title refers to the novel by that name by Jane Austen, and novel titles are italicized. This page contains some other useful sources and good examples you might want to check out if you get stuck as you're creating your citations. Don't hesitate to contact the library with any questions about citation.